Hello, dear children, and welcome to a magical bedtime journey. Tonight, we have a special tale just for you, a story of enchantment and dreams. So, snuggle up beneath your cozy blankets, close your eyes, and let your imagination carry you away to a world of wonder. As we begin our story, remember that in the realm of dreams, anything is possible, and the adventures that await are as limitless as your imagination. Are you ready? Then let's embark on our bedtime adventure together. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and let's begin. The Story of Snow White Chapter 1, Snow White's Birth and Appearance Once upon a time, in a kingdom nestled between lush forests and towering mountains, there lived a king and queen who longed for a child. Their deepest desire was for a daughter, a child as fair as the winter's snow, with lips as red as the blood-red roses that bloomed in their royal garden, and hair as black as the ebony wood that adorned their castle. Their wish was granted one winter's night, when the queen gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, as white as the purest snow, with lips as red as the most vibrant rose, and hair as black as the deepest night. They named her Snow White, a name that captured her rare and exquisite beauty. As Snow White grew, her beauty became more enchanting with each passing day, and her heart radiated kindness and goodness. However, little did she know that her beauty would soon become both a blessing and a curse. Chapter 2 The Queen's Envy and Snow White's Childhood As Snow White grew into a radiant young girl, her beauty captured the attention of all who beheld her, including the queen herself. The queen had always been a proud and beautiful woman, but a Snow White's loveliness surpassed even her own, a dark and jealous seed took root in her heart. The queen could not bear the thought of Snow White's beauty eclipsing her own. Her mirror, a magical and truth-telling mirror, confirmed her fears each day, declaring Snow White as the fairest in the land. The queen's envy grew into an obsession, and she became consumed by thoughts of ridding herself of the young princess. Her heart, once filled with love for her daughter, was now poisoned by jealousy, setting in motion a series of events that would change Snow White's life forever. Chapter 3 – Snow White's Flight and the Dark Forest One fateful day, the queen's envy and malice reached a boiling point. She summoned her most loyal huntsman and gave him a terrible command, take Snow White deep into the forest and bring back her heart as proof of her demise. The huntsman, torn between loyalty to the queen and his love for Snow White, led the innocent girl into the depths of the ominous forest. But as he raised his dagger to carry out the queen's wicked command, he found himself unable to harm Snow White. Her tears, her innocence, and her purity moved him to his core. Instead of ending her life, he warned Snow White of the Queen's treachery and urged her to flee deep into the forest, never to return to the castle. Terrified but determined, Snow White wandered through the dark and foreboding woods. Her footsteps echoed amidst the ancient trees, and the eerie silence was broken only by the rustle of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl. Yet, she pressed on, guided by a flicker of hope and the kindness of woodland creatures who offered their aid. Chapter 4 – Meeting the Seven Dwarfs As Snow White ventured deeper into the heart of the forest, she found herself in a secluded glen, where a quaint cottage nestled amidst the trees. The cottage was no ordinary dwelling. It belonged to seven dwarfs who spent their days mining precious gems in the nearby mountains. Snow White exhausted and grateful for shelter, entered the cottage. To her surprise, she found the cottage tidy but empty, as the dwarfs were away at work. Determined to repay their hospitality, she set about cleaning and tidying up their home. When evening came, the seven dwarfs returned and were astonished to find their cottage in pristine condition. To their delight, they discovered Snow White, who explained her story and the evil queen's plot to harm her. Touched by her kindness and innocence, the dwarfs welcomed her into their home, offering her protection 
and companionship in the midst of the vast and mysterious forest. And so, Snow White became fast friends with the seven dwarfs, Doc, Grumpy, Happy, Sleepy, Bashful, Sneezy, and Dopey. Each dwarf had a unique personality, but all were kind-hearted and willing to help her in her time of need. Together, they embarked on a new chapter in Snow White's life, living harmoniously in the heart of the forest. Chapter 5, The Queen's Vengeful Attempts Meanwhile, back in the castle, the Queen received a disturbing report from her magic mirror. It revealed that Snow White had escaped into the forest and was living with the seven dwarfs. The Queen's envy and hatred flared anew, and she hatched a series of dark schemes to rid herself of the princess once and for all. First, she sent an old peddler woman to the dwarf's cottage with a poisoned comb, disguised as a gift for Snow White. The moment Snow White placed the comb in her hair, she fell into a death-like slumber, saved only by the timely intervention of the dwarfs, who removed the deadly object. Undeterred, the queen devised an even more sinister plan. She created a poisoned corset and presented it to Snow White under the guise of a gift from the palace. Once again, Snow White's life hung by a thread, but the dwarfs managed to save her in the nick of time. The Queen's relentless pursuit of vengeance threatened Snow White's life at every turn, but the princess's pure heart and the dwarf's unwavering protection continued to shield her from harm. Chapter 6, The Poisoned Apple The evil queen's insidious determination to eliminate Snow White knew no bounds. She was aware that her previous attempts had failed, but she would not relent. Her obsession with being the fairest in the land clouded her judgment, driving her to seek a more cunning method to achieve her sinister goal. One day, she transformed herself into an old peddler woman and set out with a poisoned apple in her possession. The apple's skin glistened with a mesmerizing red hue, while its interior concealed a deadly secret. Disguised as an innocent fruit vendor, the queen reached the dwarf's cottage. Snow White, ever trusting and compassionate, greeted the peddler woman with kindness. The queen offered the apple to Snow White, claiming it possessed the power to grant wishes. Snow White hesitated, but ultimately took a bite from the poisoned apple, unaware of the evil hidden within. As the poison coursed through her veins, Snow White fell into a deep, lifeless slumber, her beauty seemingly extinguished forever. The wicked queen, believing her rival was finally defeated, cackled with triumph and vanished into the forest. The seven dwarfs returned to their cottage, finding Snow White seemingly lifeless. Overwhelmed with grief, they placed her in a glass coffin to preserve her beauty for eternity, and they mourned her with heavy hearts. Yet, little did they know that hope and true love would soon play a role in Snow White's fate. Chapter 7, The Prince's Arrival and Love's Awakening News of Snow White's enchanting beauty and her tragic fate spread throughout the kingdom, eventually reaching the ears of a kind and noble prince. Filled with compassion and intrigued by the story, he set out to find the fabled princess who lay in eternal slumber. Guided by fate and love, the prince's journey led him to the secluded glen where the seven dwarfs' cottage stood. As he gazed upon the lifeless beauty of Snow White within her glass coffin, his heart ached with sorrow and admiration. He knew in that moment that he could not leave her to her fate. The prince beseeched the dwarfs to allow him to take Snow White to his castle, promising that she would be honored and remembered for her timeless beauty. Reluctantly, the dwarfs agreed, knowing that this prince's love might be the key to awakening the sleeping princess. As the prince's servants transported Snow White's glass coffin to the castle, a fateful twist of destiny occurred. During the journey, the coffin was jostled, and the piece of poisoned apple lodged in Snow White's throat was dislodged. With a gasp and a flutter of her eyelids, Snow White awoke from her seemingly eternal slumber. Upon awakening, Snow White's eyes met those of the prince, and in that moment, they fell deeply in love. It was true love's kiss, 
that had the power to break the curse and awaken her from the Wicked Queen's spell. With joy and gratitude, Snow White and the Prince celebrated their newfound love, their hearts forever bound. The dwarfs rejoiced, and the kingdom hailed the miraculous reunion of the beautiful princess and her noble prince. Chapter 8 Snow White's Recovery and Joyful Reunion with Snow White now awake and her heart filled with love for the prince, the kingdom was filled with jubilation. The castle was adorned with flowers, and a grand celebration was held in honor of the princess's miraculous recovery and her impending wedding to the prince. Snow White, radiant and full of life, reunited with the seven dwarfs, who had become her dearest friends and protectors during her time in the forest. Tears of joy flowed as they shared their stories and embraced once more. Preparations for the royal wedding began in earnest. The entire kingdom was invited to attend, and it was to be a celebration of love and happiness that would shine brighter than any other in the land. As Snow White and the Prince planned their future together, they knew that their love had triumphed over darkness and adversity, proving that true love could conquer even the most wicked of spells. Chapter 9, The Queen's Comeuppance Word of Snow White's miraculous recovery and her impending wedding reached the ears of the Wicked Queen. Consumed by jealousy and hatred, she could not bear the thought of Snow White living happily ever after while she remained in the shadows. Determined to disrupt the joyous occasion, the Queen devised a plan to attend the wedding. Disguising herself as an elderly woman, she managed to infiltrate the grand celebration without arousing suspicion. Upon her arrival, the queen was shocked to discover that the bride was none other than Snow White herself, the very princess she had sought to destroy. Fearful that her past deeds would be revealed, the queen could not contain her anger and jealousy. In her fury, the queen confronted Snow White, and in the midst of the wedding festivities, she was exposed for the wicked sorceress she truly was. Justice swiftly followed as the queen faced the consequences of her malevolent actions. With the queen's treachery revealed, she was banished from the kingdom forever, never to threaten Snow White or anyone else again. Her reign of envy and cruelty had come to an end. And so, with the evil queen's reign of terror finally over, Snow White, and the prince were free to continue their lives together in peace and happiness, sharing their love and kindness with all the kingdom's subjects. Chapter 10, Snow White and the Prince's Happily Ever After With the wicked queen banished and justice served, the kingdom rejoiced in the newfound happiness of Snow White and the prince. Their love story, marked by courage, kindness, and true love's awakening, became a cherished legend throughout the land. The royal wedding, a grand and enchanting affair, was celebrated with unparalleled splendor. The entire kingdom came together to witness the union of Snow White and the Prince, whose love had conquered the darkest of spells. The ceremony was a testament to the enduring power of love and goodness. As husband and wife, Snow White and the Prince ruled the kingdom with wisdom and compassion. They worked tirelessly to ensure the well-being of their subjects, treating both the highborn and the lowly with kindness and fairness. The dwarfs, too, remained dear friends and trusted advisers in the royal court, and they were rewarded for their unwavering loyalty with a place of honor in the castle. And so, dear children, as the stars twinkled in the night sky and the castle nestled in the gentle embrace of the kingdom, Snow White, and the prince lived their days in harmony, spreading love and kindness to all they met. Remember, just like Snow White, even in the face of darkness and challenges, your kindness and love will always light the way, and your dreams will come true. Close your eyes now, and may your dreams be filled with magical adventures and the joy of goodness. Good night, sweet children, and sleep tight. As we conclude the enchanting tale of Snow White, our hearts are filled with the magic of love and the triumph of goodness. But now, dear children, we turn the pages of another timeless story, one that will carry us into a world of towers, 
secrets, and a love that shines brighter than the sun. Get ready to embark on a new adventure, as we journey into the story of Rapunzel, where a girl with golden hair and a heart full of hope will lead us into a world of dreams. Rapunzel, a tale of love and resilience. Chapter 1, The Enchanted Garden. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there lived a couple who had longed for a child for many years. Their yearning was so deep that they decided to live in a cottage next to a magnificent garden that was hidden away from the rest of the world by a high wall. The garden was full of the most beautiful and enchanting flowers, and it was owned by a powerful and mysterious sorceress. One day, as the wife looked out of her window into the garden, she noticed the most splendid sight, a bed of rampion, a rare and luscious plant that she craved more than anything else in the world. Her desire for the rampion grew until it became an obsession. She begged her husband to fetch it for her, but he knew it was forbidden to enter the garden without the sorceress's permission. Yet, the wife's pleas were relentless, and her husband, fearing for her health, decided to climb over the wall into the garden to fulfill her wishes. Little did he know that this impulsive act would set in motion a series of events that would change their lives forever. Chapter 2, The Sorceress's Demand As the husband entered the sorceress's garden and plucked the coveted rampion, he heard a voice that sent shivers down his spine. It was the sorceress herself, who had discovered his intrusion. The sorceress confronted him, her eyes filled with anger and magic crackling in the air around her. She chastised him for stealing from her garden, revealing that she was no ordinary woman, but a powerful enchantress. In her fury, she decided to punish him for his theft. The husband, trembling with fear, pleaded for mercy and explained that he had taken the rampion only to satisfy his wife's deep longing for it. Upon hearing this, the sorceress's heart softened, but she was not without demands. She agreed to spare his life on one condition, that he and his wife give her their child when it was born. Desperate to save himself, the husband agreed to the sorceress's terms, promising to surrender their child to her. With the rampion in hand, he hurried home to his wife, not daring to reveal the bargain he had struck with the sorceress. Little did they know the heavy price they would have to pay when their child, a daughter named Rapunzel, came into the world. Chapter 3, Rapunzel's Captivity Time passed, and Rapunzel grew into a beautiful and enchanting young girl with long, golden hair that flowed like sunlight. She had been sheltered from the outside world for her entire life, knowing only the confines of the tower in which she lived. Her only companions were the birds that nested in the tower's eaves and the gentle whispers of the wind. The sorceress, who had claimed Rapunzel as her own, visited her in the tower. She would call out to Rapunzel, 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 let down your hair. Rapunzel would lower her long, golden tresses from the tower window, allowing the sorceress to climb up and visit her. Rapunzel, innocent and trusting, believed the sorceress to be her mother and had no reason to doubt her. She passed her days singing, reading, and talking to the sorceress about the wonders of the world beyond the tower. Yet, as the years went by, Rapunzel's curiosity about the outside world grew. She longed to see what lay beyond the tower's walls, and her desire for freedom became stronger with each passing day. Unbeknownst to her, the fateful encounter with a young prince would soon change her life and offer her a glimmer of hope. Chapter 4, The Prince's Discovery One day, as the prince of the kingdom was riding through the forest near the sorceress's garden, he heard the sweetest singing. The voice was like a melody from the heavens, and it drew him closer and closer until he reached the high wall that surrounded the garden. Peering over the wall, he was astonished to see the most beautiful girl he had ever laid eyes on. It was Rapunzel, her long, golden hair cascading like a waterfall from the tower window. Her voice was so enchanting that it seemed to weave a spell around him. The prince was captivated by Rapunzel's beauty and her angelic singing. 
He longed to meet her, but he could find no entrance into the walled garden. He returned to the wall day after day, listening to her songs and yearning for a way to reach her. As fate would have it, he witnessed the sorceress visiting Rapunzel one day, and he heard her call out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The prince, quick thinking and determined, decided to try the same. That evening, he returned to the garden, called out the same words, and to his amazement, Rapunzel lowered her golden hair. With trepidation and hope in his heart, the prince climbed up Rapunzel's hair and into the tower. There, he stood face to face with the girl who had captured his heart. Their meeting would mark the beginning of a profound and life-altering love story. Chapter 5 Love Blossoms in Secret Rapunzel was startled by the appearance of the prince in her tower, but her surprise quickly turned into curiosity. She gazed into his eyes, and in that moment, a deep connection was forged between them. The prince introduced himself and explained how he had been drawn to her singing. Rapunzel, who had never seen anyone from the outside world, was equally fascinated by the prince's presence. As they talked, their hearts became entwined, and they soon realized that they were falling in love. Over the course of many secret visits, their love grew stronger. Rapunzel's tower, once a place of solitude, became a sanctuary for their hidden romance. The prince brought her books, told her stories of the world beyond the tower, and promised to rescue her from her captivity. However, as their love deepened, the sorceress grew suspicious of Rapunzel's behavior. She sensed that someone else had been visiting the tower and decided to confront Rapunzel, leading to a revelation that would change the course of their love story. Chapter 6 – Rapunzel's Secret Revealed One day, as Rapunzel and the prince were lost in their love and conversation, the sorceress paid an unexpected visit to the tower. She sensed that something was amiss and demanded to know the truth. Terrified and cornered, Rapunzel confessed her secret meetings with the prince and her love for him. The sorceress's anger and betrayal knew no bounds. In her fury, she decided to punish Rapunzel for her disobedience and for allowing an outsider into her tower. With a wave of her hand, the sorceress severed Rapunzel's long, golden hair and cast her out into the wilderness, leaving her to fend for herself. The prince, unaware of the sorceress's wrath, arrived at the tower that evening, only to discover the cruel truth. In his despair and grief, he leaped from the tower and was blinded by the thorns that surrounded it. His world plunged into darkness, mirroring the sorrow that had befallen Rapunzel. Separated and suffering, Rapunzel and the prince faced seemingly insurmountable challenges, but their love would endure, and their story was far from over. Chapter 7 – Rapunzel's Solitude and the Prince's Quest Cast out into the wilderness, Rapunzel found herself alone and frightened for the first time in her life. Her once luxurious hair, severed by the sorceress, had left her without the means to escape the tower or call for help. She roamed the forest, lost and confused, searching for a way to survive. Meanwhile, the prince, now blind and disheartened by his own misfortune, wandered the land in search of Rapunzel. He had not given up hope of finding his beloved, and his heartache drove him forward. Rapunzel's solitude and the prince's quest were marked by hardship and perseverance. Each faced the trials of the outside world, struggling to overcome their challenges and find a way back to one another. Little did they know that fate had more surprises in store for them, and their love would be tested once more before their reunion. Chapter 8 – The Healing Power of Love Rapunzel's journey through the wilderness was a lonely and arduous one. She relied on her wits and the kindness of animals to survive. Despite the hardships, she clung to the memory of her love for the prince and the hope of being reunited with him someday. The prince, guided by his determination and the memory of Rapunzel's voice, continued his quest to find her. He traversed mountains, crossed rivers, 
and sought help from kind strangers along the way. One day, as Rapunzel wandered through the forest, she heard a familiar voice singing a sweet melody. It was the prince, whose unwavering love and determination had led him to the very spot where Rapunzel had been cast out. Their reunion was a moment of overwhelming joy and tears. As they embraced, something miraculous happened. The prince's blindness, which had plagued him since his fall from the tower, was suddenly lifted. It was the power of their love and their reunion that had healed him. With their love stronger than ever and their trials behind them, Rapunzel and the prince embarked on a new journey together, this time unburdened by the sorceress's curse. They knew that their love could conquer any obstacle, and that they were destined to live their lives in happiness and harmony. Chapter 9, A Life of Happiness With their love renewed and their trials behind them, Rapunzel and the prince set out to build a life together. They returned to the kingdom, where they were warmly welcomed by the prince's family and Rapunzel's real parents, who had longed for their daughter's return. Rapunzel's long, golden hair, once her most defining feature, had grown back as a symbol of her resilience and strength. It shimmered like a cascade of sunlight, and she wore it as a crown of pride. The couple ruled the kingdom with kindness and compassion, using their experiences to bring about positive change for their subjects. They became known for their generosity and wise leadership, and their love story served as an enduring example of the power of love and determination. As the years passed, Rapunzel and the prince continued to live their lives together in happiness and harmony. Their love story, once filled with challenges and trials, had blossomed into a tale of enduring love and triumph over adversity. And so, dear children, remember that even in the face of the greatest challenges, love, determination, and the belief in the power of your own heart can lead to a lifetime of happiness and fulfillment. Chapter 10 Happily Ever After As the years rolled by, Rapunzel and the prince's love story became a legend in the kingdom, a story that parents told their children at bedtime, a story of hope, love, and the triumph of good over adversity. Rapunzel and the prince grew old together, their love unwavering and their bond stronger with each passing day. Their tale served as a reminder that love could conquer even the most formidable challenges, that dreams could come true, and that goodness would always prevail. And so, dear children, as you drift into the realm of dreams, may this story of Rapunzel and her prince inspire you to believe in the power of love and the magic of dreams. Just as Rapunzel's golden hair glowed with a radiant light, may your hearts shine with kindness, and may your dreams be filled with the promise of a happy ending. Close your eyes now and let the sweet lullaby of the night carry you away to a world of dreams and adventure. Good night, dear children, and sleep tight. The Story of Sleeping Beauty Chapter 1 The Royal Celebration In the kingdom where Rapunzel's and Snow White's stories unfolded, there lived a king and queen who had longed for a child of their own. Their wish was granted when a beautiful daughter was born, and they named her Aurora. The birth of the princess was a cause for great celebration in the kingdom. The king and queen invited nobles, fairies, and all the good people of the land to the grand christening ceremony. Among the guests were three wise and kind fairies who bestowed blessings upon the baby princess. They blessed Aurora with the gifts of beauty, grace, and a heart full of kindness. However, as the celebration reached its peak, an uninvited guest arrived, the wicked fairy Maleficent, who bore a grudge against the royal family for not inviting her. In her anger, Maleficent placed a terrible curse on baby Aurora. She proclaimed that on her 16th birthday, Aurora would prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and fall into an eternal sleep from which she could only be awakened by true love's kiss. The king and queen, devastated by Maleficent's curse, ordered all spinning wheels to be destroyed in the kingdom. But the three good fairies, fearing that Aurora would never know her true heritage, hid her away in a cottage deep in the forest and raised her as their own, 
keeping her true identity a secret. As we delve deeper into this tale, dear children, we will uncover the magic, love, and destiny that await Princess Aurora, known to the world as Sleeping Beauty. Chapter 2, The Growing Princess Hidden away in the forest cottage, Aurora, who was known to the three good fairies as Briar Rose, grew into a beautiful and kind-hearted young woman. She had no knowledge of her true heritage, the curse, or the life she had left behind in the kingdom. The three good fairies, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether, watched over Aurora diligently, ensuring her safety and happiness. They raised her with love and care, and she blossomed into a girl with a pure heart and a love for the forest. As Briar Rose, she spent her days exploring the woods, singing with the birds, and befriending the woodland creatures. Unbeknownst to her, her destiny was entwined with the curse that had been placed upon her, and the approach of her 16th birthday would bring both danger and the promise of true love. The fairies, aware of the impending curse, remained vigilant and tried to shield Briar Rose from the knowledge of her fate. But destiny has a way of finding its path, and as Briar Rose's 16th birthday drew near, it was time for her to learn the truth about her identity and the looming curse that threatened her life. Chapter 3, The Truth Unveiled On the eve of her 16th birthday, as the fairies prepared to reveal the truth to Briar Rose, the young princess's heart was filled with anticipation. She had sensed that something significant was about to happen, something that would change her life forever. With gentle words and loving care, the fairies shared the story of her birth, her true identity as Princess Aurora, and the curse that Maleficent had placed upon her. Briar Rose was shocked and saddened by the revelation, but her heart remained as pure as ever. Despite the grave threat that the curse posed, Briar Rose remained steadfast and courageous. She resolved to face her destiny with grace and hope. The fairies, touched by her bravery and goodness, began to make preparations to protect her. They cast a spell to hide the cottage from the outside world, ensuring that Maleficent could not find her. They also enchanted the forest to make it an even more magical and protective place. As Briar Rose's 16th birthday dawned, she knew that she could not escape her fate, but she faced it with a heart full of love, surrounded by the caring fairies who had become her family. Little did she know that her destiny was intertwined with that of a valiant prince and the power of true love's kiss. Chapter 4, The Fateful Encounter On the morning of her 16th birthday, Aurora, once known as Briar Rose, felt a mix of emotions. She had resigned herself to the fate that awaited her, but her heart still held a glimmer of hope that true love might find a way to break the curse. Unbeknownst to her, a brave and kind-hearted prince from a neighboring kingdom had heard the legends of the beautiful princess cursed to sleep for a hundred years. Determined to save her, he embarked on a quest to find the hidden cottage and awaken her with true love's kiss. Navigating the enchanted forest was no easy task, but the prince was guided by his heart and a vision of the slumbering princess. With each step, he drew closer to the cottage, aided by the magical aura that surrounded Aurora's 16th birthday. As fate would have it, the prince and Aurora's paths crossed in the forest, and their eyes met with a spark of recognition and a connection that could not be denied. It was a moment that would change the course of their lives and bring hope to the kingdom. But Maleficent, ever vigilant, was not far behind, and her malevolent presence would soon threaten Aurora's chance at true love and happiness. Chapter 5, Maleficent's Wrath Maleficent, the wicked fairy who had cast the curse upon Aurora, had not forgotten her vengeful intentions. She had been biding her time, waiting for the moment when she could ensure the curse's fulfillment and the princess's eternal slumber. When Maleficent learned of the prince's quest and his intention to awaken Aurora with true love's kiss, her anger knew no bounds. She set her dark magic in motion to prevent their reunion and to make sure the curse would be unbreakable. 
As the prince drew closer to the hidden cottage, Maleficent conjured a thorny forest filled with deadly obstacles. The prince's journey became perilous as he faced Maleficent's dark enchantments, but his determination and love for Aurora kept him going. Back at the cottage, the fairies and Aurora anxiously awaited the prince's arrival, unaware of the treacherous trials that lay ahead. The battle between the forces of darkness and true love's power would soon come to a head, and the fate of Princess Aurora hung in the balance. Chapter 6 – True Love's Triumph The prince, facing Maleficent's thorny obstacles and dark enchantments, pressed onward with unwavering determination. His love for Aurora fueled his courage, and he refused to be deterred by the malevolent forces that sought to keep them apart. In the midst of the treacherous forest, the prince's heart shone like a beacon of hope. His love for Aurora was a force to be reckoned with, and it began to weaken Maleficent's curse, breaking the thorns and enchantments that blocked his path. Back at the cottage, the fairies and Aurora felt a surge of hope as they sensed the prince drawing nearer. The power of true love's kiss, combined with the prince's bravery, held the key to breaking the curse. As the prince finally reached the hidden cottage, he and Aurora were reunited. Their love was so pure and true that it defied Maleficent's dark magic. With a gentle kiss, the curse was broken and Aurora awakened from her century-long slumber. The joy and celebration that followed were unparalleled. The kingdom rejoiced and Aurora and the prince, whose love had triumphed over adversity, were destined to live their lives together in happiness and harmony. Dear children, this is a tale of love's enduring power, of the triumph of good over evil, and a reminder that even in the face of the darkest curses, true love will always find a way to shine through. Chapter 7 – A Royal Union With the curse broken and Aurora awakened, the kingdom celebrated the long-awaited reunion of the princess and her prince. The castle was adorned with flowers and banners, and a grand celebration was held in their honor. Aurora's parents, the king and queen, were overjoyed to have their daughter back, and they embraced her with tears of happiness. The fairies, who had protected and cared for Aurora all these years, were thanked by the royal family for their unwavering devotion. As Aurora and the prince planned their future together, they knew that their love was stronger than any curse. Their wedding was a magnificent affair, attended by nobles and commoners alike, a symbol of the unity and joy that had returned to the kingdom. Aurora and the prince ruled the kingdom with wisdom and compassion, ensuring the well-being of their subjects and living a life filled with love and happiness. The story of Sleeping Beauty, once marked by a curse, had transformed into a tale of enduring love and the triumph of good over evil. And so, Dear children, as you prepare to enter the realm of dreams, remember that love has the power to break even the darkest curses and awaken the sleeping hearts of those in need. Close your eyes now, and may your dreams be filled with the promise of love's everlasting magic. Good night, sweet children, and sleep tight. Chapter 8 – The Legacy of Love With Aurora and the Prince ruling the kingdom with wisdom and compassion, their love story became a cherished legend throughout the land. The tale of Sleeping Beauty, once a story of curses and slumber, had evolved into a story of love's enduring power. The legacy of Aurora and the Prince was one of unity, kindness, and the belief that love could conquer even the most formidable challenges. They became known far and wide for their benevolence and for the lasting peace that had returned to the kingdom. As the years passed, the kingdom flourished, and Aurora and the prince grew old together, their love undiminished by time. Their story was told and retold, a testament to the power of love and the magic that could be found in even the darkest of circumstances. And so, dear children, as you drift into the realm of dreams, may the tale of sleeping beauty remind you that love has the power to awaken even the sleepiest of hearts and that kindness and goodness will always prevail in the end. Close your eyes now, 
and let the gentle lullaby of the night carry you away to a world of dreams and enchantment. Good night, dear children, and sleep tight. If you're still awake, our bedtime stories will continue with another enchanting journey. We've shared tales of love, resilience, and triumph, and now, we venture into a world of magic and adventure with the story of Hansel and Gretel. As we step into this captivating tale, be prepared for a journey filled with courage, cleverness, and the enduring bond of siblings. So, snuggle up beneath your blankets, close your eyes, and let your imagination carry you away to a world of fairy tales and wonder. Are you ready? Then let's begin our adventure with Hansel and Gretel. Chapter 1 The Siblings and the Forest Our tale begins with two siblings named Hansel and Gretel. They lived in a small cottage on the edge of a dense and mysterious forest. Life was not easy for them, for their family was poor, and food was scarce. One year, a terrible famine gripped the land, and their stepmother, who was unkind and stern, convinced their father that there was not enough food to share. She persuaded him to take Hansel and Gretel deep into the heart of the forest and leave them there, believing it would ensure the survival of the rest of the family. Hansel and Gretel, overhearing their parents' plan, devised a clever plan of their own. Hansel gathered shiny white pebbles, while Gretel secretly filled her apron with bread from the kitchen. The next day, as they journeyed into the ominous forest, Hansel left a trail of pebbles behind them to mark their path. They ventured further and further, until they reached a place so deep in the woods that they were certain no one would find them. Night fell, and the moon cast an eerie glow on the forest. Hansel and Gretel huddled together, clutching the breadcrumbs that would lead them back home. But they had no way of knowing the perils that awaited them in the dark and enchanted forest. Chapter 2 – A Mysterious Encounter As Hansel and Gretel huddled together in the depths of the dark forest, they listened to the rustling of leaves and the mysterious sounds of the night. The moon's glow provided little comfort, and they clung to the breadcrumbs they had scattered, their only lifeline back home. Hours passed, and fatigue finally overcame them. Exhausted and fearful, they fell into a restless sleep. When they awoke in the morning, they were horrified to discover that the breadcrumbs had vanished. In their place were strange birds that had feasted on the trail they had hoped to follow. Panic set in as Hansel and Gretel realized they were lost in the heart of the forest, with no way to find their way back home. As they wandered deeper into the woods, their hunger grew, and they longed for food and safety. Then, in the distance, they saw a glimmer of hope, a small cottage made of gingerbread and candy, as if it had sprung from a fairy tale itself. Their stomachs grumbled, and their hunger led them toward the cottage, unaware of the mysterious inhabitant who awaited them inside. Chapter 3 – The Witch's Cottage Hansel and Gretel, their hunger and curiosity getting the better of them, approached the gingerbread cottage with cautious excitement. The cottage's walls were adorned with sugary treats, and the roof was made of glistening frosting. It was a sight to behold, unlike anything they had ever seen. As they ventured closer, they couldn't resist breaking off a small piece of the gingerbread wall and tasting it. It was even more delicious than they had imagined. Their hunger overcame any lingering doubts, and they began nibbling away at the cottage. Little did they know that the cottage belonged to a wicked witch who had lured them there with the promise of sweets. The witch's plan was to fatten them up and then eat them, for she had a taste for tender children. Hansel and Gretel's delicious discovery was short-lived, for the witch soon appeared, cackling with glee at their misfortune. She revealed her true intentions and locked Hansel in a cage, while Gretel was forced to become her servant. But the siblings were clever and resourceful, and they hatched a daring plan to outsmart the wicked witch and find their way back home. The enchanting forest held many secrets, and Hansel and Gretel were determined to uncover them all to escape the clutches of the witch. 
Chapter 4, The Clever Escape Locked in the witch's cottage, Hansel and Gretel faced a dire situation. They knew they needed to act quickly to escape the clutches of the wicked witch, who planned to cook Hansel and make Gretel her servant. While the witch was busy preparing her cauldron, Gretel seized an opportunity to outwit her. She pretended to be confused and asked the witch to demonstrate how to check if the oven was hot enough to bake Hansel. The witch, believing she had outsmarted Gretel, climbed into the oven herself to show her. Seizing the moment, Gretel swiftly shut the oven door, trapping the witch inside. With courage and cunning, she had turned the tables on their captor. Now free from the witch's tyranny, Hansel and Gretel searched the cottage for any clues that might lead them back home. They discovered a chest filled with precious jewels and treasures that the witch had collected over the years. Realizing that these treasures could provide for their family, they gathered as much as they could carry. With their newfound wealth and a sense of triumph over the wicked witch, Hansel and Gretel embarked on a journey through the forest to find their way home. Little did they know that their adventures were far from over, and the forest held more secrets and challenges to test their wits and courage. Chapter 5, The Enchanted Forest Hansel and Gretel's journey through the enchanted forest was both thrilling and perilous. As they ventured deeper into the woods, they encountered magical creatures, mysterious glades, and hidden paths that seemed to lead in circles. The forest was alive with enchantments, and it was as if the very trees whispered secrets to them. They met talking animals who offered guidance, kind-hearted fairies who bestowed blessings upon them, and even a gentle old hermit who shared his wisdom. Each encounter in the forest brought them closer to finding their way back home. They learned valuable lessons about trust, kindness, and resourcefulness. Their bond as siblings grew stronger, and their determination to reunite with their family burned brighter with each passing day. But the forest was also home to challenges and dangers. The siblings faced tests of courage and wit, from treacherous paths to cunning tricksters. Yet, they pressed on, for they knew that the love of their family awaited them at the end of their journey. As Hansel and Gretel navigated the ever-changing forest, they could only hope that their cleverness and resilience would guide them back to the loving arms of their father and the safety of their home. Chapter 6, The Reunion After what seemed like an endless journey through the enchanted forest, Hansel and Gretel's determination finally paid off. They stumbled upon a familiar sight, their father's cottage on the outskirts of the woods. Their father had never stopped searching for them, and when he saw them approaching, his heart leaped with joy. Hansel and Gretel rushed into his arms, tears of happiness streaming down their faces. They shared their incredible adventures, and how they had outsmarted the wicked witch. Their father, overjoyed to have his children back, listened with amazement and pride. Together, they returned to their family home, where they were welcomed with open arms by their stepmother and their younger siblings. The treasures they had collected in the witch's cottage provided for the family's needs, and they lived in happiness and prosperity. Hansel and Gretel's story became a legend in the village, a tale of courage, cleverness, and the enduring love of siblings. The lessons they had learned in the enchanted forest stayed with them throughout their lives, and they cherished the importance of family and the bonds that held them together. And so, dear children, as you prepare to drift into the realm of dreams, may the tale of Hansel and Gretel remind you of the power of cleverness, courage, and the love that binds siblings. Close your eyes now and let the gentle lullaby of the night carry you away to a world of dreams and enchantment. Good night, sweet children, and sleep tight. Chapter 7, A Tale to Remember As the years passed, Hansel and Gretel's story became a cherished tale in the village, a story of courage, cleverness, and the enduring love of siblings. It was told around campfires, shared with children at bedtime, and passed down from one generation to the next. 
The lessons they had learned in the enchanted forest stayed with them throughout their lives. Hansel and Gretel grew into wise and caring adults who valued family above all else. They cherished the bonds that held them together and shared their experiences with their own children. The village prospered and the memory of the wicked witch and the enchanted forest faded into the past. But the tale of Hansel and Gretel remained a reminder that even in the face of the darkest challenges, cleverness, courage, and the love of family would always prevail. And so, dear children, as you prepare to drift into the realm of dreams, may the tale of Hansel and Gretel inspire you to be brave, clever, and kind. Close your eyes now, and let the gentle lullaby of the night carry you away to a world of dreams and enchantment. Good night, sweet children, and sleep tight. Our bedtime story continue with Cinderella. A kind-hearted maiden overcomes hardship with the help of her fairy godmother. Her enchanting night at the royal ball leads to a joyous reunion with Prince Charming. Chapter 1 A Life of Hardship Once upon a time, in a faraway kingdom, there lived a kind-hearted young woman named Cinderella. She was known for her gentle spirit, sparkling eyes, and a heart full of kindness. But despite her inner beauty, Cinderella's life was marked by hardship. After her beloved mother passed away, Cinderella's father remarried a woman who had two daughters of her own. Although Cinderella hoped for a loving family, her stepmother and stepsisters were unkind and treated her as a servant in her own home. Cinderella's days were filled with endless chores, from scrubbing floors to tending to the needs of her stepfamily. She bore these burdens with grace and resilience, finding solace in the kindness of the animals that shared her home. As she faced the challenges of her daily life, Cinderella held on to a dream, a dream of kindness, love, and the hope that someday, her life would change for the better. But little did she know that a magical encounter would set her on a path to a destiny beyond her wildest imagination. Chapter 2 A Glimmer of Hope Cinderella's life of hardship continued, and as each day passed, she found solace in her dreams and the company of the little mice and birds that sought refuge in her room. They became her loyal friends, helping her with her chores and bringing a glimmer of joy to her otherwise dreary existence. One day, news spread throughout the kingdom that a grand royal ball would be held at the palace. It was a celebration to find a suitable bride for the prince, who was in search of true love. The entire kingdom buzzed with excitement, and Cinderella's stepsisters were overjoyed at the prospect of attending. Cinderella watched from the shadows as her stepsisters prepared for the ball, their dresses adorned with jewels and their hearts filled with anticipation. She longed to go too, but her stepmother was determined to keep her at home, treating her as if she were invisible. As Cinderella gazed out the window, her heart ached with longing. She wished, more than anything, to attend the royal ball and experience a night of magic and wonder. It seemed like an impossible dream, but little did she know that her life was about to change, thanks to a bit of magic and the kindness of her fairy godmother. Chapter 4 A Night of Enchantment As Cinderella arrived at the Grand Palace in her dazzling gown, she felt like a true princess. The royal ball was a magnificent spectacle, with music, laughter, and the dazzling glow of a thousand candles. Cinderella's beauty and grace caught the eye of everyone in attendance, including the prince himself. Prince Charming, as he was known, approached Cinderella and was captivated by her charm and elegance. They danced together, and for Cinderella, it was a moment of pure enchantment. She had never felt so free and alive. The hours flew by as Cinderella and the prince danced the night away, their hearts drawing closer with every step. But as the clock in the palace tower neared midnight, Cinderella remembered her fairy godmother's warning. She knew she had to leave before the enchantment was broken. With a hurried farewell, Cinderella fled from the palace, 
leaving behind a single glass slipper, as she disappeared into the night. The prince was left with only that delicate slipper, a symbol of the mysterious and enchanting woman he had met. Back in her tattered clothes, Cinderella ran through the palace gardens, the clock striking midnight as she went, and her magical night coming to an end. But she held on to the memory of the ball and the hope that somehow, someday, her prince would find her once again. Chapter 5 The Search for Cinderella the next morning, the prince was determined to find the mysterious and enchanting woman he had met at the ball. He knew that she was the one he had been searching for, and he couldn't bear the thought of never seeing her again. Armed with the glass slipper that Cinderella had left behind, the prince embarked on a quest to find its owner. He ordered his servants to visit every corner of the kingdom and have every maiden try on the delicate slipper. It was a challenging task, but the prince was unwavering in his determination. Meanwhile, back at Cinderella's home, her stepmother and stepsisters returned from the royal ball, gushing about the beautiful stranger who had captured the prince's heart. They had no idea that the mysterious woman was none other than Cinderella herself. As the prince's search continued, Cinderella, who had returned to her life of hardship, clung to the hope that their paths would cross once more. Little did she know that her destiny was about to take a magical turn, one that would lead to a joyous reunion and a happily ever after. Chapter 6 – A Joyous Reunion The prince's search for Cinderella continued throughout the kingdom, and every maiden tried on the delicate glass slipper. As the days passed, hope seemed to dwindle, but the prince remained resolute. One day, the prince's procession arrived at Cinderella's humble home. Her stepsisters eagerly tried on the slipper, but it was clear that it did not fit them. Just as the prince was about to depart, Cinderella's kind-heartedness shone through. She approached the prince and asked if she could try on the glass slipper. Her stepmother and stepsister scoffed at the idea, but the prince agreed. As she slipped her foot into the slipper, it fit perfectly, just as if it had been made for her. The prince was overjoyed to have found the woman he had been searching for. Cinderella's true identity was revealed, and her stepmother and stepsisters were left in astonishment. Cinderella was swept away to the palace, where she was reunited with the prince. Their love, which had first blossomed at the royal ball, was now celebrated by the entire kingdom. And so, dear children, as you prepare to drift into the realm of dreams, may the tale of Cinderella remind you that kindness, grace, and the enduring power of love can turn even the most challenging circumstances into a story of hope and happiness. Close your eyes now and let the gentle lullaby of the night carry you away to a world of dreams and enchantment. Good night, sweet children, and sleep tight. On to our next story. Now, let's follow Belle, a book-loving maiden, as she discovers the true meaning of love when she befriends a prince cursed to be a beast in this enchanting tale of transformation and compassion. Beauty and the Beast Chapter 1, Belle and Her Dreams Once upon a time, in a quiet village nestled in the rolling hills of France, lived a young woman named Belle. She was known throughout the village for her beauty, but more importantly, for her kind heart and her love for books. Belle's life in the village was simple, yet she dreamed of adventures beyond the confines of her provincial life. Her days were spent reading and caring for her father, Maurice, a gentle inventor known for his eccentric contraptions. The villagers, however, found Belle and her father peculiar and couldn't understand her love for books. They believed her dreams of adventure were foolish and fanciful. Yet, Belle remained undeterred, for within the pages of her beloved books, she found a world of magic, far-off places, and kindred spirits. Little did Belle know that her life was about to take an unexpected turn, one that would lead her to a mysterious castle, a fearsome beast, and a tale of love and transformation that would captivate the hearts of all who heard it. 
Chapter 2, The Captive Father One day, as Belle's father, Maurice, set off on a journey to showcase his latest invention at a fair, he became lost in the dense forest surrounding the village. Disoriented and tired, he stumbled upon a majestic and seemingly abandoned castle hidden deep in the woods. Inside, the castle was unlike anything he had ever seen, filled with magnificent riches and enchanted objects that moved and spoke. Maurice was in awe but also bewildered by the castle's mysteries. However, his curiosity led him to a room filled with roses, and he plucked a single, precious bloom for his daughter, Belle. Little did he know that this seemingly innocent act would set off a chain of events that would change their lives forever. As Maurice attempted to leave the castle, he was confronted by the beast, a fearsome creature, who saw the taking of the rose as an act of theft. The beast enraged and with a heart burdened by a curse, imprisoned Maurice in the castle's dungeon. Now, Belle's destiny was intertwined with the castle and its mysterious master, setting the stage for a tale of love, compassion, and the transformative power of kindness. Chapter 3, Belle's Sacrifice Word of Maurice's disappearance reached Belle, and she immediately set out to find her father. Guided by her unwavering love, she ventured into the dense forest, following the path he had taken. Eventually, Belle arrived at the enchanted castle hidden deep within the woods, just as her father had. Inside, she was met with the same wondrous and enchanted objects, which she quickly realized were alive and could communicate with her. As she explored the castle, Belle soon discovered her father locked in the dungeon, his health deteriorating. She pleaded with the beast for his release, offering to take her father's place as his captive. The beast, surprised by Belle's selflessness, agreed to the exchange, setting Maurice free. Belle, now a prisoner in the castle, faced her fears and uncertainties with grace and courage. Little did she know that her sacrifice would not only change her own life, but also hold the key to breaking the curse that had befallen the beast and his enchanted servants. Chapter 4, The Enchanted Castle As Belle settled into her new life within the Enchanted Castle, she discovered the full extent of its magic. The castle was inhabited not only by the beast, but also by a group of servants who had been transformed into household objects, candelabras, teapots, and clocks by an enchantress's curse. Each of these enchanted servants had their own unique personalities and had been trapped in their current forms for years. Lumiere, the suave candelabra, Cogsworth, the punctual clock, and Mrs. Potts, the caring teapot, were among her new companions. Despite their enchanted appearances, Belle found warmth and friendship among the castle's inhabitants. She learned about the curse that had befallen them all and how it could only be broken if the beast could learn to love and be loved in return before the last petal fell from the enchanted rose. Belle's arrival had brought a glimmer of hope to the castle, and her kindness and curiosity would play a crucial role in the lives of both the beast and his enchanted servants. Chapter 5, A Tale of Friendship and Learning as Belle spent more time in the enchanted castle, she formed deep bonds with its inhabitants, particularly Lumiere, Cogsworth, and Mrs. Potts. Each day, she learned more about their lives before the curse, their dreams, and their hopes of one day being human again. Belle also discovered the extensive library within the castle, a treasure trove of knowledge that further fueled her passion for books and learning. She spent hours reading, expanding her understanding of the world and sharing stories with the beast. Slowly but surely, Belle and the beast began to forge a friendship. He found himself captivated by her intelligence, kindness, and unwavering belief in the goodness within him. Belle, in turn, saw past the beast's fearsome exterior to the wounded soul beneath. The castle became a place of transformation, not just for its inhabitants, but also for the beast, who was slowly learning to let go of his anger and bitterness. As the days turned into weeks, 
their friendship deepened, and the Enchantress's curse seemed less insurmountable. But time was ticking away, and the enchanted rose's petals were wilting. The fate of the beast and his enchanted servants hung in the balance, and Belle's presence held the key to their salvation. Our next story is a cautionary tale. A young girl named Little Red Riding Hood who encounters a wolf on her way to her grandmother's house. The story emphasizes the importance of listening to cautionary advice and being aware of potential dangers. The Little Red Riding Hood Chapter 1 Little Red Riding Hood's Journey Once upon a time, in a peaceful village nestled on the edge of a dense, enchanted forest, lived a sweet and innocent young girl known as Little Red Riding Hood. She earned her name from the crimson hooded cape her loving grandmother had made for her, which she wore on her visits. One bright morning, Little Red Riding Hood's mother called her to the kitchen, handing her a basket filled with freshly baked goodies, warm bread, sweet treats, and a jar of honey. Take these to your grandmother, her mother said, and be sure to stay on the path through the forest. Do not stray. Little Red Riding Hood set off with a joyful heart, excited to visit her grandmother, who lived in a cottage deep within the forest. The sun filtered through the trees, casting dappled shadows on the path, as she journeyed deeper into the woods. Little did she know that her innocent journey would soon take a dangerous turn, as she encountered a cunning wolf. Chapter 2 – A Dangerous Encounter As Little Red Riding Hood continued along the forest path, she hummed a cheerful tune and admired the beauty of the woods. The tall trees seemed to whisper secrets, and the birds sang their melodies overhead. Unbeknownst to her, a sly and hungry wolf had been watching her from the shadows. He was drawn to the sweet scent of the treats in her basket and hatched a devious plan. Approaching Little Red Riding Hood with a friendly demeanor, the wolf engaged her in conversation. He asked where she was going and why she was in the forest alone. The innocent girl, unaware of the danger, told him about her visit to her grandmother's cottage. The wolf, with a wicked gleam in his eye, concocted a deceitful plan. He suggested that Little Red Riding Hood take a scenic route through the forest, while he would take the shorter path to reach her grandmother's cottage first. Little did she know that he intended to reach the cottage before her, posing as her grandmother, and satisfy his hunger for both goodies and mischief. Chapter 3 – The Deceptive Disguise Little Red Riding Hood, trusting and unsuspecting, followed the wolf's suggestion to take the scenic route. She wandered deeper into the forest, enjoying the beauty of nature, while the cunning wolf raced ahead to her grandmother's cottage. Upon reaching the cottage, the wolf knocked gently on the door, hoping to deceive Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother. He mimicked the girl's voice, calling out, Grandma, it's me, Little Red Riding Hood. I've brought you some treats. From inside the cottage, the elderly grandmother, who was hard of hearing, replied, Come in, dear. She had no reason to doubt the voice she heard. The wolf wasted no time. He entered the cottage, finding the grandmother in her bed, her eyesight not what it used to be. He had successfully deceived her with his cunning disguise, and he now lay in wait, ready to enact his sinister plan. Chapter 4 – The Grandmother's Rescue Meanwhile, Little Red Riding Hood continued her leisurely journey through the forest, oblivious to the danger that lurked ahead. She marveled at the beauty of the woods, picking flowers and humming her tune. Back at her grandmother's cottage, the wolf, disguised as the girl, attempted to maintain the illusion. Grandma, why do you have such big eyes? he asked, mimicking Little Red Riding Hood's voice. The elderly grandmother, squinting to see better, replied, all the better to see you with, my dear. The wolf continued, Grandma, why do you have such big ears? Again, he mimicked the girl's voice. The grandmother replied, all the better to hear you with, my dear. Finally, the wolf asked, Grandma, why do you have such big teeth? 
His intentions were becoming clear. But just as the wolf was about to reveal his true nature and pounce on the grandmother, a sound from outside the cottage caught his attention. It was the real little red riding hood, approaching the cottage with her basket of treats, completely unaware of the peril that awaited her. Chapter 5 The Brave Girl's Triumph As Little Red Riding Hood neared her grandmother's cottage, she noticed that the door was slightly ajar and became concerned. She recalled her mother's warning about staying on the path and not talking to strangers, and a sense of unease washed over her. Little Red Riding Hood cautiously pushed open the door and stepped inside the cottage. What she saw there made her heart race with fear and determination. The wolf, still disguised as her grandmother, lay in wait. But the young girl, sharp-witted and brave, sensed something was amiss. She approached the bed, her voice trembling as she asked, Grandma, why do you have such big eyes? The wolf, taken aback by her courage, replied, All the better to see you with, my dear. Little Red Riding Hood continued, Grandma, why do you have such big ears? The wolf replied, All the better to hear you with, my dear. Then, with unwavering resolve, the girl asked, Grandma, why do you have such big teeth? At this point, the wolf could no longer maintain the deception. With a menacing growl, he revealed his true form, leaping out of the bed and lunging at Little Red Riding Hood. But the brave girl was not defenseless. She reached into her basket and pulled out a sharp knife, a gift from her mother for just such emergencies. With quick reflexes, she defended herself, striking the wolf and driving him out of the cottage. Little Red Riding Hood had not only saved herself, but also her grandmother from the cunning wolf. The two embraced, grateful for their miraculous rescue, and the forest once again became a place of enchantment and wonder. And so, dear children, as the tale of Little Red Riding Hood concludes, we are reminded that courage, wisdom, and quick thinking can triumph over even the most cunning of adversaries. Close your eyes now and let the gentle lullaby of the night carry you away to a world of dreams and wonder. Good night, dear children, and sleep tight. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, this whimsical tale takes us on a journey with Alice, as she falls down a rabbit hole into a fantastical world filled with peculiar characters and nonsensical situations. Chapter 1. Down the Rabbit Hole Alice, a curious and imaginative young girl, found herself bored one sunny afternoon. Sitting on the riverbank with her sister, she sighed and wished for something exciting to happen. Little did she know that her wish was about to come true. As she daydreamed, a white rabbit in a waistcoat and pocket watch hurried by, muttering to himself, I'm late. I'm late. Intrigued by this unusual sight, Alice decided to follow the rabbit down a rabbit hole that appeared to go on forever. Tumbling and falling through the tunnel, Alice experienced a sensation of weightlessness until she finally landed with a thud in a peculiar and wondrous place, Wonderland. Alice's adventures in this fantastical realm were about to begin, where nothing would be as it seemed, and where curious creatures and bizarre events awaited her at every turn. Chapter 2 the Pool of Tears As Alice continued her journey through Wonderland, she found herself in a strange and unpredictable world where logic seemed to have no place. She encountered talking animals, bizarre landscapes, and a series of puzzling situations. Soon after her arrival, Alice found herself in a curious hall with many locked doors, each leading to a mysterious room. She was determined to find her way out, and, to her amazement, discovered a bottle labeled Drink Emmy and a cake labeled Eat Emmy. Alice, driven by her insatiable curiosity, first tasted the cake and then drank from the bottle. Her size began to change rapidly, first shrinking to just a few inches, and then growing so tall that her head hit the ceiling. With no way to reach the key on the table to unlock the doors, 
Alice's tears of frustration formed a pool in the hall. A friendly mouse and other curious creatures swam in her tears, and Alice found herself embarking on a most unusual conversation with them. In Wonderland, where logic and reason often took a back seat to whimsy and absurdity, Alice was in for a series of delightful and perplexing encounters that would challenge her understanding of the world and herself. Chapter 3 The Caucus Race and the Caterpillar After her curious adventures with the Pool of Tears, Alice found herself wandering deeper into Wonderland. She soon encountered a group of unusual creatures gathered in a circle. These creatures included the dodo, a mouse, a lorry, and many others. They were engaged in what they called a caucus race. The concept of the race was rather unconventional, with participants running in random directions, and everyone declared a winner. Alice joined in the race, experiencing the whimsical and nonsensical nature of Wonderland firsthand. She was amused by the absurdity of the situation, but also puzzled by the lack of rules and order. Continuing her journey, Alice eventually came across a caterpillar sitting on a mushroom, puffing on a hookah. The caterpillar, in its languid manner, engaged her in a cryptic conversation, posing questions about identity and transformation. As the caterpillar's smoke rings filled the air, Alice was left pondering the enigmatic nature of Wonderland and the strange beings she encountered. Little did she know that her adventures were far from over, and she would soon cross paths with even more eccentric inhabitants of this fantastical realm. Chapter 4 The Mad Tea Party Alice's journey through Wonderland continued, and she soon found herself in yet another peculiar place, a tea party like no other. Seated at the table were three eccentric characters, the Mad Hatter, the March Hare, and the Dormouse. As Alice joined them, she quickly realized that this was no ordinary tea party. Time itself seemed to have gone mad in Wonderland, with the Hatter and the March Hare stuck at tea time forever. The Hatter even declared that it was always six o'clock, and that there was no time for clean cups. Alice attempted to engage in polite conversation, but the residents of this curious tea party proved to be more than a little mad. The Dormouse fell asleep mid-sentence, and the Hatter and the March Hare continually spouted riddles and nonsensical statements. Alice's attempts to make sense of the madness around her left her bewildered and frustrated. She pondered the nature of time and the eccentricity of Wonderland, where even a simple tea party became an absurd and never-ending affair. As she continued her adventures, Alice would soon encounter more eccentric characters, and bewildering situations in this topsy-turvy world where normal rules no longer applied. Alice's journey through Wonderland took her to new and stranger realms. She found herself in a mysterious forest, where the trees appeared to be made of giant, bright-colored chess pieces. Amidst the curious forest, she encountered a grinning, mischievous cat, the Cheshire Cat. The cat had a habit of appearing and disappearing at will, leaving only its wide grin behind. Alice engaged the Cheshire Cat in conversation, seeking guidance on which path to take. However, the cat's responses were enigmatic and cryptic. It offered advice in the form of riddles and suggested that everyone in Wonderland was mad in their own way. Despite its puzzling nature, the Cheshire Cat became Alice's somewhat unreliable guide, offering cryptic hints and disappearing whenever it pleased. With its whimsical and unpredictable behavior, the cat added to the ever-growing sense of wonder and confusion that permeated Wonderland. Alice's adventures were far from over, and her encounters with Wonderland's eccentric residents continued to challenge her perception of reality and her understanding of the world. Chapter 6 The Queen of Hearts Croquet Ground As Alice journeyed deeper into Wonderland, she found herself in a bizarre and chaotic setting, the Queen of Hearts Croquet Ground. The Queen was known for her explosive temper and her fondness for ordering executions, in this surreal game of croquet, the mallets were flamingos, the balls were hedgehogs, 
and the queen's cards painted the roses red. The queen was quick to anger and often shouted, off with their heads, for the slightest of offenses. Alice, trying her best to adapt to Wonderland's peculiar rules, attempted to play the croquet game. However, the absurdity and randomness of the proceedings made it nearly impossible to follow any sense of order or strategy. Throughout her time on the croquet ground, Alice encountered a cast of Wonderland characters, each more eccentric than the last, including the White Rabbit and the King of Hearts. As the game progressed, Alice's confusion and frustration mounted, and she began to question the logic of this strange world. Little did she know that her adventures in Wonderland were building to a grand climax, where she would confront the formidable Queen of Hearts herself and witness a trial like no other. Chapter 7, Alice's Trial and the Caucus Race Again Alice's journey through Wonderland reached a dramatic crescendo, as she found herself in the midst of a surreal and nonsensical trial. The Queen of Hearts, known for her impulsive orders to off with their heads, presided over the proceedings. In this chaotic courtroom, Wonderland's residents were put on trial for a variety of absurd offenses, including the Knave of Hearts, who stood accused of stealing tarts. The trial was filled with bizarre and irrational moments, with the witnesses giving nonsensical testimony. Alice, growing increasingly frustrated with the lack of reason and fairness, found herself swept up in the madness. She questioned the Queen's authority and declared that the entire trial was nonsense. Just as the trial seemed to be heading toward a dark and unjust conclusion, Alice's experience in Wonderland took an unexpected turn. She suddenly awoke, realizing that it had all been a dream. As Alice returned to the real world, she reflected on her strange and whimsical adventures, leaving behind the topsy-turvy world of Wonderland. Though the events may have been a dream, the lessons she learned about logic, absurdity, and the power of imagination stayed with her. And so, dear children, the tale of Alice's adventures in Wonderland reminds us that sometimes the most extraordinary journeys can occur in the realm of dreams and imagination, where logic and reality are left far behind. Close your eyes now and let the gentle lullaby of the night carry you away to a world of dreams and whimsy. Good night, dear children, and sleep tight. Now, let's follow the adventures of Peter Pan, the boy who never grows up, as he takes Wendy and her siblings to the magical world of Neverland, where they encounter pirates, mermaids, and fairies. Chapter 1, The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up in the heart of London, nestled among the rooftops, lived the darling family, Wendy, John, Michael, and their loving parents. One night, while the children were fast asleep in their nursery, a mischievous and magical boy named Peter Pan entered their lives. Peter Pan, with his pixel-like appearance and the ability to fly, had come to retrieve his lost shadow. In his haste to escape, he had left it behind during a previous visit. Wendy, the eldest of the darling children, awoke to find Peter Pan in her room, desperately searching for his missing shadow. Peter Pan's arrival brought enchantment and wonder to the children's lives, as he introduced them to the concept of never growing up. He told them stories of the magical world of Neverland, where adventures, fairies, pirates, and mermaids awaited. With a sprinkle of fairy dust, Peter Pan offered Wendy, John, and Michael the chance to join him on a journey to Neverland. They could become part of his band of lost boys, a group of children who had also chosen to remain young forever. As the children soared into the night sky, leaving their nursery behind, they embarked on an extraordinary adventure that would take them to the far-off realm of Neverland, where they would encounter pirates, Indians, fairies, and the infamous Captain Hook. Chapter 2, Welcome to Neverland. As Peter Pan and the darling children soared through the night sky, they left behind the world they knew and arrived in the fantastical realm of Neverland. It was a place where the impossible became possible, where time stood still, and where adventure awaited around every corner. 
Neverland was a land of diverse landscapes, from dense jungles to sparkling lagoons. Its inhabitants included not only the Lost Boys, but also magical creatures like fairies, mermaids, and even a tribe of Native Americans led by Princess Tiger Lily. One of the most memorable encounters was with the mischievous and magical fairy, Tinker Bell, who had taken an immediate disliking to Wendy but was fiercely loyal to Peter. As the days turned into nights and the nights into days in the timeless world of Neverland, Wendy, John, and Michael embraced the spirit of youth and adventure. With Peter Pan as their guide, they would discover the true meaning of childhood and the importance of imagination. Chapter 3 – The Lost Boys and Their Island Life In Neverland, Wendy, John, and Michael quickly adapted to their new life with the Lost Boys, a group of boys who, like Peter Pan, had chosen to remain forever young and free. They were led by Peter himself and lived without the constraints of grown-up rules and responsibilities. The Lost Boys inhabited a secret underground hideout in the heart of the island, where they played games, told stories, and lived in harmony with the wild creatures of Neverland. Each Lost Boy had a distinct personality and nickname, such as Tootles, Nibs, Slightly, and Curly. As Wendy, John, and Michael became part of this playful and adventurous group, they learned to fend for themselves and relished the simple joys of childhood. They joined in wild games of make-believe, battled imaginary foes, and embraced the thrill of exploration. One of their favorite activities was listening to Peter Pan's captivating stories of their adventures, including encounters with pirates, Indians, and other mystical beings that roamed Neverland. Yet, in this world of endless fun and excitement, there was also a sense of longing. The children couldn't help but miss their parents and the comfort of home. While they were growing accustomed to Neverland's enchantments, the pull of their own world tugged at their hearts. Chapter 4 – Adventures in Neverland Life in Neverland with Peter Pan and the Lost Boys was a continuous adventure. The days were filled with exploration, games, and encounters with the island's fantastical inhabitants. One of their most thrilling adventures involved a face-off with Captain Hook, the infamous pirate captain who ruled the seas around Neverland. Captain Hook was determined to capture Peter Pan and exact revenge for a previous encounter. The children also encountered the fierce Tiger Lily and her tribe of Native Americans, forging a friendship and alliance with them. Together, they stood against the threat of Captain Hook's crew. Amidst all the excitement, the children couldn't forget the importance of home and family. They often looked out at the distant lights of London, a reminder of the world they had left behind. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Wendy, John, and Michael experienced a life like no other. They learned the value of friendship, the thrill of adventure, and the bittersweet feeling of growing up. And so, Dear children, the tale of Peter Pan continues with the endless adventures of the darling children in the magical realm of Neverland. It is a world where time stands still, where the imagination knows no bounds, and where the bonds of friendship are forged through the trials of youth. Close your eyes now, and let the gentle lullaby of the night carry you away to a world of dreams and boundless adventures. The Secret Garden this heartwarming story follows a young girl named Mary Lennox, who discovers a hidden garden behind the walls of her uncle's grand estate. As Mary tends to the neglected garden, she also begins to heal the spirits of those around her. Chapter 1 – Mary and the Neglected Garden The secret garden begins in the midst of a gloomy and neglected mansion in India. Mary Lennox, a spoiled and unloved girl, is living there with her wealthy parents, who are rarely present in her life. She is cared for by servants, but receives little affection or attention. Mary's world is turned upside down when a cholera outbreak claims the lives of her parents. She is sent to England to live with her reclusive uncle, Archibald Craven, at Misselthwaite Manor, a vast, 
mysterious, and lonely estate on the Yorkshire Moors. At the manor, Mary is met with strict housekeepers and a house that seems devoid of warmth. She is often left to her own devices, exploring the immense mansion and its gardens. However, Mary's curiosity eventually leads her to the discovery of a hidden door that opens into a neglected and overgrown garden. The garden is locked, and the key is missing, but Mary becomes determined to uncover its secrets. She learns about her cousin, Colin Craven, who is rumored to be a sickly and bedridden boy living somewhere within the mansion. Mary's mission to find the key and unlock the hidden garden becomes a focal point of her life. Chapter 2, The Hidden Door Mary's determination to find the key to the hidden garden consumed her thoughts. She asked Martha, a kind servant, about the garden and its whereabouts. Martha shared tales of its once vibrant beauty, and how it had been locked and abandoned after a tragic incident. One day, while exploring the mansion, Mary stumbled upon the room where her uncle Archibald Craven slept. It was a gloomy chamber filled with haunting memories, and it was here that Mary's curiosity got the best of her. She discovered a hidden key that she suspected might unlock the mysterious garden. With newfound excitement and anticipation, Mary set out on a mission to find the garden's hidden door. Her quest for the key and the garden would lead her to unexpected discoveries and a transformative journey. And so, dear children, the tale of the secret garden continues as Mary delves deeper into her quest to unlock the hidden garden. Her journey will not only uncover the garden's secrets, but also reveal the magic of nature and the healing power of friendship. Close your eyes now, and let the story carry you away to a world of mystery and wonder. Chapter 3, The Secret Garden Revealed Mary's search for the hidden garden's door led her through the corridors and halls of Misselthwaite Manor. She followed clues and her own intuition, until she arrived at an ivy-covered wall in the gardens. It was here that Mary discovered a hidden door, concealed beneath the tangle of vines. With trembling hands, Mary inserted the key she had found in her uncle's room into the lock. The door creaked open, revealing a world she had never imagined. The secret garden lay before her, overgrown and wild, but brimming with the potential for beauty. As Mary ventured deeper into the garden, she was greeted by the scent of flowers and the songs of birds. She marveled at the neglected roses and the overgrown pathways. With each passing day, Mary worked tirelessly to bring the garden back to life, enlisting the help of Martha's brother, Dickon, who had a special connection with nature. With their combined efforts, the garden began to flourish once more. The once hidden beauty of the garden mirrored the transformation occurring within Mary herself. As she tended to the plants and explored the garden's secrets, Mary discovered the healing power of nature and the joy of friendship. Chapter 5, A New Life in Bloom As spring blossomed and the garden continued to flourish, the children reveled in the newfound magic of their lives. The once neglected garden had transformed into a paradise of color and life. Flowers of every hue bloomed, and the air was filled with the sweet scent of blossoms. Mary, Colin, and Dickon spent their days in the garden, learning its secrets and nurturing its beauty. They shared stories, dreams, and laughter, forging a bond of friendship that was as enduring as the garden itself. With each passing day, Colin's health improved. His legs grew stronger and he realized that the mysterious illness that had confined him to his room had been a result of fear and neglect. The garden's vitality and the companionship of his friends had healed him both physically and emotionally. As the children worked together to care for the garden, they also cared for one another. They learned valuable lessons about the power of nature, the importance of friendship, and the beauty of a life in bloom. Chapter 6 the transformation of Misselthwaite. The transformation of the secret garden had a profound impact, not only on Mary, Colin, 
and Dickon, but also on Misselthwaite Manor itself. The once Samba mansion began to fill with life and laughter. The joy and wonder of the garden drew the attention of the manor's other inhabitants, including Martha, her family, and even Mary's uncle, Archibald Craven. Archibald, who had long been a recluse after the loss of his wife, was slowly drawn out of his solitude by the beauty and vitality of the garden. One day, as he wandered into the garden, Archibald was struck by its transformation. The sight of his son, Colin, walking among the flowers and laughing with Mary and Dickon, filled his heart with joy. He realized that the garden had become a place of healing not only for Colin, but also for himself. Archibald Craven's presence in the garden marked a turning point for the manor and its inhabitants. The once distant family began to reconnect, and the mansion's gloom began to lift. As the seasons changed, the garden continued to bloom, reflecting the growth and transformation of all who had been touched by its magic. The enduring bonds of friendship, the healing power of nature, and the beauty of a life in bloom had forever changed Misselthwaite and its residents. And so, the tale of The Secret Garden unfolds, with each chapter revealing the profound impact of nature, friendship, and transformation on the lives of those who have discovered the garden's secrets. Humble Cobbler Tale In the bustling heart of a vibrant city, there lived a humble cobbler named Eli. His tiny shop, tucked away in a narrow alley, was adorned with a faded sign that simply read, Eli's Shoes, crafted with heart. Though surrounded by extravagant boutiques and flashy stores, Eli's shop stood as a testament to his unwavering commitment to humility. Eli's reputation for crafting exquisite footwear spread far and wide, but he remained steadfast in his simple ways. He never boasted of his talent, or charged exorbitant prices. Instead, he treated each customer, whether rich or poor, with the same warmth and respect. One day, a renowned fashion designer, Isabella, happened upon Eli's unassuming shop. Intrigued by the tales of his craftsmanship, she entered and requested a pair of custom-made shoes for a prestigious fashion event. Eli, recognizing her name and fame, agreed with a kind smile. As Eli worked tirelessly on the shoes, Isabella watched in amazement. She saw his hands transform raw materials into works of art, each stitch reflecting his passion for his craft. But what struck her most was Eli's humility, his unwavering dedication to his art, without ever seeking recognition or praise. The day of the fashion event arrived, and Isabella proudly wore Eli's creation, a masterpiece of simplicity and elegance. When asked about her shoes, she didn't mention the famous designer label, but instead shared the story of the unassuming cobbler who had crafted them. Eli's humility and talent soon became a legend in the fashion world. He continued to make shoes for people from all walks of life, but he never let success change him. His shop remained small and unpretentious, a beacon of humility in a world often blinded by extravagance. And so, Eli's story spread, reminding everyone that true greatness lay not in wealth or fame, but in the humble pursuit of one's passion, in serving others with kindness, and in remaining true to oneself, no matter how brightly the spotlight shone. Good night, dear child. The Tale of King Aldrich and the Gardener In a land where power and pride reigned supreme, there lived a ruler named King Aldrich. His kingdom was vast, his riches immense, and his crown heavy with diamonds and gold. Yet, with each passing day, his ego grew even larger than his realm. One sweltering summer's day, as King Aldrich strolled through his opulent palace gardens, he came across a lowly gardener named Thomas. Thomas toiled under the scorching sun, tending to the flowers with a smile on his face. His hands were calloused, and his clothes were tattered, but his heart was as pure as the morning dew. Curious, King Aldrich approached Thomas and asked, why do you labor so tirelessly when you possess nothing but dirt and weeds? 
Thomas, bowing respectfully, replied, Your Majesty, I find joy in nurturing life, in watching these humble plants grow into vibrant beauty. I may have little, but I am content in knowing that I help create something beautiful for all to enjoy. The king was taken aback by Thomas's humility and wisdom. He realized that despite all his power and wealth, he lacked the inner peace and contentment that Thomas possessed. This encounter became a turning point in King Aldrich's life. He began to spend more time in the gardens, learning from Thomas about patience, simplicity, and the beauty of nature. Over time, the king's arrogance waned, and his heart softened. He started to give back to his kingdom, focusing on the well-being of his people rather than his own grandeur. King Aldrich's transformation inspired his subjects. He initiated reforms to alleviate poverty, improve education, and promote kindness. The kingdom flourished not because of its ruler's riches, but because of his newfound humility and dedication to his people. In the end, King Aldrich realized that true power lay not in material wealth or grandeur, but in the humility to learn from those considered lowly, to serve one's subjects with compassion, and to find contentment in the simple joys of life. And so, he ruled with a heart that had been humbled, proving that even the mightiest can be touched by the power of humility. Good night, dear child.